the Jabra Elite 75T, the Phil T1XS, two of the worst earbuds ever. I implore you, if you're not willing or interested to use the Android or Apple apps that go along with these earbuds, do not buy them. They're totally inferior without their apps. And that said, like so many people ask me about the Jabra 75s, right? They said this was a great earbud. So I went out and bought them off Amazon myself, 129 bucks. And today I'm gonna to give you my opinion of the Jabra Elite 75T, including the must use app. A lot of people were calling these like one of the best buds of 2020. Since I'd never tried them, they were not in my top earbuds of 2020 list. Now you can check out that video here, but if they're really that good, let's compare the 75Ts with one of my earbuds from my top 20 list, my number three earbud, the Phil T1XS, and its must-use app. This competition is going to cover their must-use apps, their specs, their latency, their sound quality. You're going to hear a real phone call made with the Jabra's microphones. I'll put a link to the phone calls from the T1XS in the video description. And stick around till the end when I'll summarize whether you should spend 129, 149, 199 bucks on the Jabra Elites, depending on which model you buy, or if you could save like 70 to 100 bucks and just buy the Phil T1XS instead. So let's get started with round one, the cases. So the Jabra's case is small. I mean, it's really well constructed. I give it a thumbs up for, you know, that fifth pocket of your jeans compatibility. It'll fit in there. The lid stays open or closed, however you leave it, and the buds are pretty easy to get in and out of the case. They do get a little bit slippery if your fingers are like really dry, but once I realized that, I was able to get them in and out of there pretty quickly, and the charging connectors do work pretty well. Their case charges via USB-C, but not wirelessly. Except if you go to the Jabra website where you can order the Elite 75Ts with a wireless charging case for a slight, let's call it what it is, a massive upcharge to 199 bucks for the wireless charging case over what's about $129 for the non-wireless charging case. I don't get it, but it is available. Now, generally speaking, the case is slightly smaller than the Phil's case and the lid does function better, arguably. Now the Phil's case is slightly shorter, but it is longer. It also doesn't have wireless charging um, and the lid doesn't really stay open, but the buds do stay seated in the case and it does give you that fitted lid, which means the buds should be, you know, stay really input when the lid is closed and they're also easy to get in and out of the case. Now, oddly, both of these cases use only a single light to indicate the charging status. I don't really necessarily like it, but at least it's easy to understand, right? When that light turns red, recharge the case. Call the case battle a slight toss-up. I guess you could kind of give the edge to the jabbers, but not really enough to even give them the full point. Round two, battery life. Now, in my opinion, both of these are kind of mid-pack players. The 75Ts, they log about five and a half hours per charge and 24 hours using the case. They get a rapid charge of 15 minutes for one hour of playtime. You stack that up against the T1XSs, they have six hours per charge, 24 hours with the case, and their rapid charge is a little bit better with 10 minutes giving you two hours of playtime. So that rapid charge and slightly better battery life score for the T1XS make it win this round. First point awarded to the T1XS. Round three, let's jump right in. Comfort. So we have some real differences here between these two competitors, right? The Jabra, they're kind of shaped to rest on your ear for support. And the T1, instead, they use those wingtips for stability. Now, this may come down to preference, but I'm pretty sure that the Jabras would actually fit a wider range of ears, while the T1XS really fills up my ear really a lot, and I have to use the smallest wingtips but it does give more stability than the 75T because of those wingtips. So for you gym hounds, the fills are the better choice, in my opinion. Now, while they're both comfortable earbuds, in my opinion, I think I already said this, but I'm gonna say it again, I think more people will find the Jabbers fit better and are more comfortable. My opinion, of course. Score this round for the Jabbers. Next up, round four, the apps. Okay, man, Jabra, irritatingly, 
or wisely, I guess depending on your point of view, forces you to download their app and update their earbuds to get ANC. Now, I don't know if that's a ploy to get some of my personal information or not, but it is a necessity that you download this thing. And in fact, the exact same thing could be said of the Fill app. You have to use the, the app in order to get the earbuds out of easy mode. And I'm sure everyone watching my channel will want their earbuds to be able to control the volume and previous and next track so they're gonna need to use the fill app to do it on the fills so while it's really annoying to me to require the app i mean both of these apps are really really useful for their excellent equalization controls they both can update the firmware and the earbuds to the latest you know to the latest and greatest model where they can do some you know useful updates and capabilities or even overall and sound improvements i mean look at the jabber 75 t's they did an update over the air to give the buds a and c that is amazing now, the Fill app works really well. Here's what it gives you. It gives you movies, uh, movie mode, gamer mode, music mode, 15 equalization settings, plus it gives you DSP audio enhancements for even better audio, it gives you in-ear detection, and sensitivity adjustments for both the controls and the in-ear wear detection. The Jabra app gives you, I mean, really it's a dizzying or staggering array of features in the Jabra app but you get separate customizations of the controls for music or calls. You get my sound, which is EQ settings tailored to your ears. You get multiple presets for equalization. Plus you get like a really usable, configurable, like with four or five equalization bars that you can tune however you want. It has soundscapes, which is just 12 like nature sounds to help you relax. You can set the app up to run in six different languages. You have an ANC strength setting. And there's even more stuff to explore. There's moments, which are like three separate settings for ANC and EQ that you can tailor and switch right in the app really fast. I mean, when it's all tallied up here, these are really two great apps. And one of the reasons that I chose to check, compare these two earbuds is because of their great apps with the EQ control. So as much as I want to ding these earbuds for needing the app, if you can get over that and actually install the app, they both deserve a point. But the Jabra's app has so many more features. I don't know if you'll ever use them, but you've got to score this round for the Jabra. It is an incredibly well done app. Round five, ANC and ambient mode. Now this round has a clear winner and it is the Jabra Elite 75T. Pay a little more, get a little more, right? Uh, the Phil T1X only have ambient mode, but the Jabra, after you do the update in the app, it also has ANC. And on the Jabra, the uh, controls will let you cycle through that ANC on, off, or ambient mode. The app will also let you tailor the strength of the ANC, including varying the ANC strength between left and right earbuds, which is very unusual or unique in my opinion. Now the ANC isn't as powerful as like the best earbuds that I've tested from One More and Apollo uh, and the Apollo Bold ANCs, but it's about 70% of that. Meanwhile, the T1XS doesn't have ANC at all, but they have entirely useful passive noise isolation for keeping your surroundings at bay. So both of the ambient modes on these earbuds, they work well enough. I think I give the fills just a slightly better implementation, just because when you turn off the Jabra's ambient mode, you just kind of get this annoying lingering about half a second of ambient echo that comes through the left earbud. But when you're actually using them, they're pretty much on par. And regardless of that, as a package, the Jabra's ANC and ambient modes combined are gonna be more useful and definitely surpass the Phil T1XS's capabilities. Score this round for the Jabra's. Round six, Codex, movies and gaming. Okay, we got two solid earbuds here. Both of them support AAC and SBC. They both work well for movie watching. Regardless of whatever my scores say, they both work well for movie watching. Now the Phil's, they have a specific movie watching mode which lowers the latency even more and gives you an even better movie watching experience. They also have a gamer mode, which lowers it even better. So when you get into gaming, the fills have the edge. But the Jabra, they don't have any dedicated movie mode, but they were still really fine for watching movies. So going into my latency test, recall that my T1 XS review, their latency scores were 425 milliseconds with AAC on and 300 milliseconds, I believe it was in movie mode. It could have been in game mode, but 300 milliseconds was the best I tested. So let's see how the Jabbers fare in the latency tests.
Now, I don't even know if that should come as a surprise, but the jabbers test it out at exactly the same 425 milliseconds of latency that the fills tested to. And surprisingly, I mean, actually playing games with these were good, mostly because the sound stage is, is really good. And even though you get a little bit of lag, I think it's acceptable for casual gaming. And it is nice because you get that full sound stage. So I still score the fills higher with their dedicated movie and gaming modes, but it's hardly a loss for the Jabras. They're still competent for either of those things, gaming or movies. Score this round for the T1XS. Round seven, Bluetooth, mono mode, and IPX ratings. Okay, so the Phil T1X, they laid out a tough performance to beat. They got excellent Bluetooth connectivity. They got a range of about 94 feet measured with my laser measurement tool. The T1XS also work in mono mode, which is a true mono mode, meaning you can hear both left and right audio tracks out of either earbud when they're connected in mono mode, which is a nice feature. The T1XS are IPX5 rated, which means they're ready for workouts where you get sweaty or even walking in the rain. I mean, that's a pretty solid set of specs. I mean, it's probably pretty common in 2021 that we would get specs like that. But let's see if the Jabra, which is also a slightly older bud, let's see if the Jabra can top them. So the Jabra's Bluetooth range is also very strong. I measured it at 98 feet, which is just like within a couple of feet of the T1XS. And they also work in true mono mode. And they are also IPX55 rated, which is basically the same thing when it comes to water. Now these buds, once you're unlocking them with the apps, pit it against each other. I mean, they're so closely matched. This Even in this category, I mean, it's feeling like a tie again, but wait, the Jabra, they have another feature which throws them kind of over the top. Well, really over the top, right? And that is a pretty excellent and rare feature, multi-point connectivity. For, for true wireless earbuds, I've seen very few that do this. So, so what is multi-point connectivity? Like, so multi-point connectivity is just the ability for the earbuds to simultaneously connect to two devices. And in the case of the Jabras, Jabra built them to connect to either two phones or a phone and a tablet. It is possible to connect them to a computer, but you're gonna have to work at it by reading the instructions on their website. They have a really good support, well-written, content-rich website, but it will explain to you how to possibly get them to work well with your computer. Really not designed for that though. But if you're using two devices, Android devices or iOS devices, you should be able to take calls from either of them and one of them, I think at the last connected source, will be the one that works for music. Score this round to the Jabra Elite 75s. Okay, round eight, controls. Now this is another round with some serious differences. I mean, let's start with the fact that both earbuds controls work well. You will get the hang of them and they will work responsively and they're gonna serve you well in either way, in either one that you choose. They're both really, really good. But again, one of them is superior to the other. First off, they both control play, pause, previous and next track, volume up and down. They both control ambient on and off, and in the Jabra's case, also ANC on and off. Here's the first difference, okay? The T1XS, for some reason, do not control calling up the voice assistant. Even if you use the app, you cannot control calling up the voice assistant. The Jabra will allow you to call up the voice assistant. The second difference is that the T1XS are touch controls, and the Jabra's are physical buttons. But whoa. I mean, the Jabra's physical buttons are so silky smooth to use. They're just fantastic physical button controls, period. No need to use the thumb technique that I talk about with some. You just push those buttons. They're super soft, velvety smooth light touches. In this round, the Phil's omission of the voice assistant gives the Jabra the crack it needed to take the round. Score another point for the Elite 75T. Let's talk about sound quality. So starting with max volume. The fill came in at an absolutely ridiculous 104 decibels. That's seriously loud, people. And the Jabbers are even louder at 106 decibels. That's just not soft to chart loud. That's really, really loud. So be careful, but I will still score this round for the 75 T's for you volume junkies out there. Talking a little bit more about sound, actual sound quality, not just volume. I mean, this is fun. Both of these earbuds have great apps. If it wasn't for the apps, would I really like the sound? I don't know. Does it matter? I don't think it does because you can go in here with the multiple equalization settings or just the tunability of the equalization settings. You know, especially in the Jabber, where you get that five band equalizer, you can just tune it however you want, however you like. And I'm like old school. I had about 15 channel equalizers in the past. I like to play with them and I like to tune music the way that I like music. These will let me do that. 
even if I don't really like the out of the box sound signature. So once you do that, make no mistake about it, both of these buds bring excellent, excellent sound quality. Both of them can cross the line on my personal preference of being too bright in the high frequencies. But I think that that's an appealing characteristic, right? To be able to bring your own tuning and to be able to bring the earbuds to your liking, which mean could mean really high, you know, high uh, push forward on the treble. I think it's still a really good thing. So you get the sound that you like, not the sound that their engineers like, but the buds are capable of tuning and being able to handle the tuning that you like. The Jabra, in my opinion, deliver a really, really heavy bass sound. And that bass can, I think, get in the way a little bit of the mids if you're not careful about how you use that excellent app to tune the EQ to your preference. That may be what you like, and that's cool. Just know that out of the box, they do sound a little bit too heavy on the bass, but eventually you'll get really, really good bass, really good vocals, and excellent treble. Um, they may be just, compared to the fills, they may be just a little bit not as great in the soundstage department, but it's still really good. Remember what I said in the gaming mode, like when I play games with them, they're really good. Let's just compare that with the Phil T1X. I mean, these also bring a great uh, bass, tunable equalization, and really good high frequencies that can overwhelm me, personally. Now the T1XS also managed to deliver like so much detail and clarity in the mids and the highs and like the vocals, plus that great soundstage that almost matches up to the Jabra. Phil has managed to make these earbuds sound great at a fraction of the Jabra's price. Now I chose the Phil T1XS as my number three earbud in my top earbuds of 2020, which you can watch here. <laughs> and this comparison reaffirms how good I think the Phil T1XS sound. The Jabra's will sound better after you do the personalization tuning for your own self using the equalizer or the personal sound option, but the Phil's do it for a whole lot less money. I score this round for the Jabra if price doesn't matter to you, but I mean, give the Phils a point for doing great things with their earbuds and how they sound for like way less than half the price. Lastly, let's check out the noise canceling mics on the Jabra Elite 75Ts. All right, this is another test phone call with the Jabra Elite 75T. I totally messed up that last call because I thought I pressed the mute button a single tap the right ear button, and that actually hangs up the call. So this is a test of the mute button on the Jabra Elite 75T. I got an audible tone saying that I was muted, so I absolutely 100% knew that I was muted. That is a really nice feature. Again, double tapping on the left ear bud, that's going to put me, uh, it automatically goes into side tone mode, so when I double tap the left ear bud, it take side tone off, which I hate. I mean, I I love this feature that I have side tone so that I can hear my surroundings and a little bit of my voice helps me modulate my voice. Now, again, with the cars going by, the ground is wet. It had been raining this morning, so when these cars go by, there's a lot of extra noise that's coming off the wheels and tires and, uh, you know, water and whatever sprouting up, hitting the sides of the metal cars. It's definitely a lot louder. There's also a wind coming at me kind of from my front right almost circling around me a little bit right now, so you're getting like a really solid test of these microphones. My sample phone call of these in a quiet environment was, they weren't very good. That would be my honest opinion, uh, considering all the other earbuds that I've tested, they didn't sound great. They didn't sound like they were accurately picking up and reproducing my voice, nor were they consistently reproducing my voice like with a, you know, a consistent sound. It sounded like it was kind of clipping in and out a little bit, which I have no idea why in a quiet room, right? So we'll see how this phone call goes, and uh, we'll get your opinion on where I should rank them in my ranking of my Mike Series playlist. All right, that's going to do it for the Jabra Elite 75 piece. Based on that phone call, the Jabbers have pretty solid mics that pick up my voice over the background traffic noise, but I don't hear them doing a lot of reduction of that traffic noise in the background. I also will say that during my calls with the Jabra, I really like that side tone feature and I love having that mute button. I mean, two features that aren't really always available on like less priced earbuds, but they're really appreciated here for the extra money you pay for the Jabbers. And by the way, let me know what you think of the Jabbers mics and where I should place them in my mic series rankings. The Jabbers mics more than hold their own against the Phil's mics. 
So again, I'm gonna score this round to the Jabbers. Okay, let's sum this up. It's starting to look pretty heavily weighted in favor of those Jabbers. If you check out how much these cost, I mean, you could probably get these anywhere from $99 refurb all the way up to, like I said, $199 off the Jabber website with a wireless case. I'm talking about if your budget is like 50 bucks and you wanna go with the Phil T1XS, do not fear. I, it's my number three bud in my, in my yearly rankings and I'm sticking with it. It's a really sweet sounding earbud. The sound is just excellent. It's got both deep bass, it's got vibrant high frequencies, it's got super clarity somehow for that price. I don't understand it with even, a, even with only a single driver. Plus the Phil T1XS are exceptionally accurate. They're great for watching movies and also for gaming. The Bluetooth and the battery life are, are, are solid, nothing wrong there. The controls work well, but they do lack that virtual assistant access, which is a little bit of a bummer, but maybe it's worth it to save a hundred bucks. And you do need to use that app to unlock the full controls, which is another strike against them. But like I said, without the app, they're really not a great earbud. With the app, they are a great earbud. Now, if your budget is higher, definitely go with the winners here. I mean, the Jabra Elite 75T, you, you, again, you have to use the app and you gotta tune them to your liking. If you just buy them and you don't do anything with it, you, you're not gonna like it and you're not gonna have ANC. You need to use the app. The sound, again, is overall better than the fills once you tune it up. The buds do work well for movies. It's odd that for like 149 or 29 or 99 refurb, you don't get wireless charging and you have to pay like all the way up to 199 to get wireless charging, but at least you can. I just don't see how that's worth it in, in my book. Thanks for watching my comparison of the Jabra Elite 75T against the Phil T1XS. And let me know what you think of the Jabra versus the Phil T1XS in the comments. Which do you prefer? And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, sign up for those notifications so you don't miss any of my great new stuff that's coming. Like and share this video. Stay safe everyone. Sozan out.